Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again, and yet another video in my series taking a look at. Um, hey, every day that passes, man, we're drawing nearer to training camp. So training camp's coming fast and hard, guys. And 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 between that, this downtime, um, it sucks not having football on Sundays. But hey, once training camp starts, y'all, you you already know what's coming next preseason games and ultimately the regular season. I know I'm excited about the regular season just like everybody else is. Um it, it's a it's a different tone this off season than it ever has. Um I know it's Thursday. Normally I do my live streams on Thursday nights, but um because of the, the schedule with, with my son and everything, I, I had I had to switch gears. So I'm just gonna do a video um and um I'll bring it back to you guys next week, I promise. So um I'll do a big live stream right before training camp. How about that? I'll make it up and do that. Um, so the guy in that I'm doing today and taking a look at is undrafted player out of Northwestern, um, linebacker Nate Hall, um, number 43 with the Cowboys right now. Um, if he makes the team, of course, that's going to change. But um, you know what this linebacker core, it's, it's an uphill battle because we already have a lot of solid guys, but if these young guys can show and prove that they are, um, cause we got a couple of young undrafted guys, him, the other guy I talked about and, uh, McDowell, which I'm also doing, a, um, a video on him later too. But, uh, yeah, these guys definitely, um, are definitely rangy guys. They're kind of like how Kyle, uh, Quiero was, and they actually kept him on the practice squad and Kyle, Qu Quiero or whatever his last name, you know what I'm talking about. He's still on the team too as well. So he's still vying for a position on this team. And I think they actually might move him to safety though um, because he's he's that rangy. But Nate Hall, this guy is kind of similar to that. Um, definitely a, a go-getter. Um, he was a three-year starter at Northwestern. Um, he played on the strong side primarily in college. Um, well, his senior year primarily. And his senior year, he totaled 51 tackles, five and a half sacks, I mean, five and a half tackles for loss and um, three interceptions. Now, when I tell you that he's a rangy guy, he's, he's, he plays very well in pass coverage and um, he's better in pass coverage than he is in, in, in run, in the run game. Um, because again, he could drop back in coverage. He could check the tight end, um, sideline to sideline. Um, he, he's definitely a ball hawk. He's, he's a guy that can read the quarterback and, and track where the ball is going. So that's that's the reason why he had three interceptions his senior year in college. So not bad. Um, fun fact about him. Um, well, and I think that the the, the reason why he wasn't drafted, um, which to me is probably a lot of guys are like that too. That are that the the guys that are aggressive and take chances. Um, sometimes that can hurt you too. Shoot, the guy. Um, Michael Jackson that we signed, he's a guy that takes chances too. Again, when you take chances, sometimes it doesn't work in your favor. Sometimes the guy catches the ball and you get burned because you're over here trying to jump the route and he didn't already got the ball. But I mean, that's 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 what happens when you're aggressive. You, you gotta you gotta break a couple of eggs to make an omelet. That's just how it works. Um, fun fact: he's a huge NASCAR fan. Um, obviously his favorite driver is, is Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> um, and he also received his master's degree this spring. So shout out to him for that, for getting his master's degree. Now, shout out to all these football players, um, uh, that, that are getting, even Dak Prescott, getting your master's while you're playing in the NFL or just playing football in general. It's hard to be an athlete, a student athlete at that and actually going to school and, getting a degree that's worthwhile to you because again remember football isn't going to last forever the football is a small portion of your life um you retire very early in football and um what you're going to do for the rest of your life you got to find something else to do you got to invest in something you got to start a business you got to do something so shout out to Nate Hall for for getting his masters i mean i i commend that because education is important and i will always um be be on the forefront of that one um Right now, um, him being with the Cowboys, um, he's focused on learning the playbook um, and learning from other linebackers on his team because he sees what we have talent-wise, and he knows it's an uphill battle. And um, he's willing to play special teams and do all those things to get noticed. Um, 
he wants to rely on his instincts. He doesn't want to go out there and um, he wants to learn everything so he can rely on his instincts and and react. Because again, when you're thinking too much, you can't react fast and you miss a tackle, you make a wrong angle or anything like that. So, I mean, it, 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 that's pretty much the narrative when it comes to that. So, again, he he's just focused on trying to um, learn his thing so he doesn't have to think. So he could just go out there and do him. Um, physically, he's a good looking linebacker. Um, he's, like I said, he's long, he's rangy. Um, he's a guy that flashes when giving the opportunity. What I tell you guys before about this team where the lot, the tight ends that we had with, um, with, uh, Blake Jarwin and, and Dalton Schultz and even Rico Gathers, you give these guys the opportunity, they're going to show you what they can do. I mean, they're here for a reason. It's not like, um, they just sucked in school because they wouldn't have made it to the NFL. Talk about the guys that's already on the team. They wouldn't have made it to the NFL if that was the case. But again, you got to give them a chance. And I just think that before our coaching staff wasn't giving guys chances. And I think that now this off season with a lot of these undrafted players that we have, it's imperative that they give these guys an opportunity. And he's definitely a guy that will show you something if you give him a chance to do something. So um, even though he's undrafted and possibly may not make the team, um, and, and again, I know some of these guys are possibly um, camp bodies, but they have talent. And, 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 I've, and I've done my, you know, research on them. And I looked at some of these guys. I'm telling you, like some of these dudes definitely, um, they are undrafted. But sometimes I'm like, dang, somebody could have drafted these guys because they definitely have the talent to be in the NFL. Um, just like with anybody else, it takes grooming. It takes time. It takes uh, learning something else that you didn't know before. Um, that's a part of the learning process, y'all. You you can't just come into something brand new and expect to be great at it. I mean, there's some guys that are just that athletic and that confident they could just step right into it. But that that's so few and far between, like, it just doesn't make any sense. So I say that, you know, again, given the opportunity, you can't get better if you don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like with anything else. If you don't practice anything, you don't get better. Like, for, for me, if I don't... If I always practice on my turntables before I do a gig or or anything when it comes to DJ, and if I don't practice that, I'm not going to be a better DJ. If I don't um, practice roller skating, I'm not going to get better. If I don't um, practice, or if I don't look at a car or work on a car, I'm not going to be able to work on a car or remember what part goes where and this and that. So I mean, it's just it's just it's just whatever that you're doing. If you don't do it. You're not gonna get better at it. It's just it's just a simple thing. It's like with your body. If you don't work out, you're gonna get fat. So it is what it is. Um Yeah, I mean that's all that's all I really had with him. Um I'm I'm really loving and I know some of you guys are probably like not caring about these guys that I'm talking about, but it's cool because again, it just puts it in your mind that when I talk about this, you're gonna you're gonna watch training camp. And you're going to see these guys in the field like, yo, E2 talked about that guy. Let me see what this guy is doing. You know what I mean? And, and I try to bring certain things to the table that people are not thinking about um, because I think that's important. Because, again, we you have a 90-man roster in the offseason. Um, the Cowboys are looking at these guys as potential players for the team. So me as a fan, me as a YouTuber, um, I'm looking at it the same way. And I'm doing my research and I'm looking at these guys like, okay, Maybe this guy could, I'm, I'm a, like, it's not like, it's not like I'm trying to be a scout, but it's more so of like, you know, us YouTubers, we're almost like scouts, almost. When you look at like Law Nation and Foots and, and Vosh, those guys do a lot of film study and stuff like that. So it's almost like you're a scout because you have to know the X's and O's and you have to see these guys. Now, granted, I don't do a lot of film. I don't do, um, I don't, I do my own film study. I don't do it on camera because again, I'm so afraid of, YouTube and, and them demonetizing everything like I don't know how to get away with it like they do so I just don't do it but I talk about it because I know what I'm talking about and I just kind of bring it to the forefront so you guys can see what I'm talking about but again um watch Nate Hall I'm gonna be looking at a lot of these undrafted guys this offseason and um I'm also going to do one of course on the on the wide receiver that everybody's talking about John V. Johnson um like I said he's probably going to be one of the last guys I do you know as my finale, say the best for last. Um, but yeah, so just I, I like talking about these undrafted guys because I root for the underdog. That's just how I am. But yeah, Nate Hall, look for him, uh, number forty three. You're gonna see him flying around the field. 
Um, I think these young guys are going to get a lot of opportunity, um, granted, because a lot of the veterans are going to sit naturally. Um, some of them are going to have injuries that they're trying to get back from and things of that nature. So they're going to get the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> I feel sorry for some of them because they know they're not going to make the team. They're just here just to just to show what they can do. And again, you're not just auditioning for the team that you're playing for currently. You're auditioning for 31 other teams in the league as well. So somebody's going to see you. Somebody's going to pick you up. And hopefully you can, even at worst to worst, worst come to worst, you're on somebody's practice squad and you're still making at least $500,000. That's more than what I make. So <laughs> at the end of the day, it is what it is. So um, let me know what you guys think about Nate Hall. Um, if you guys even heard of him, um, those of you that um, follow Northwestern football, but um, yeah, so the next guy I'm going to do, of course, is our draft pick, Tony Pollard. That's going to be my next video. But anyway, with that being said, y'all, it's your boy E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.